In this lesson, I am going to talk about equations involving absolute values. Let us recall the definition of the absolute value of a number. The absolute value of a number A is written as this. It has the following properties. If A is positive or zero, then the absolute value of A is just itself. And if A is negative, then the absolute value of A is equal to negative A. Why is it equal to negative A? Remember that the absolute value of a number is always positive. And if A is negative, then negative A is positive. For example, the absolute value of 2 is just itself because 2 is positive. Next, the absolute value of negative 1 fourth, this is actually, using the definition, it's equal to negative of negative one fourth because negative one fourth is negative so that's why we have one fourth the absolute value of four minus pi is equal to itself because four minus pi is positive why is that because four is bigger than pi let us recall that pi is approximately equal to 3.14 next the absolute value of square root of 2 minus 3 is equal to its negative because square root of 2 is smaller than 3. It's smaller than 3, so therefore, square root of 2 minus 3 is negative. So that's why when we get the absolute value of this, we want to get its negative. And the negative of square root of 2 minus 3 is just this one with the order interchanged. Let us start discussing absolute value equations. Suppose that A is just an expression here and the absolute value of A is equal to C. If C here is negative, then the equation absolute value equals C has no solution. Just so that you can imagine what's going on. For example, our C here is negative 5. Can the absolute value of a number be equal to a negative number, negative 5? No, this is impossible. So that's why this one has no solution. Or you say that the solution set is the empty set, set containing nothing. What about if this constant over here is equal to 0? We have that the absolute value of A is equal to 0. What? should be a for its absolute value to be equal to zero then that means that the expression has to be equal to zero so that's why this one has one solution i'll just write it down here if that is the case a is equal to zero if c is now positive then the absolute value of a equals c has two solutions why is that again let's just plug in some values suppose that the absolute value of a is equal to five what should be the value of A? Think of numbers whose absolute value is equal to 5. What are the only possibilities? A is equal to 5 or A is equal to negative 5, correct? Because the absolute value of negative 5 is also equal to 5. So in general, if the absolute value of A is equal to a positive number, what should be the value of A? A is equal to C or A is equal to negative C. So remember this, if the absolute value of an expression is equal to a negative number, no solution. If the absolute value of a number is equal to zero, then that expression has to be equal to zero. And if the absolute value of a number is equal to a positive number, then it has two solutions. It's equal to either that positive number or it's negative. How do we now solve an absolute value equation? Suppose that we're given the absolute value of a linear equation is equal to C. The first thing that we need to do is to isolate the absolute value expression on one side of the equal sign. Why is that? So that we can apply the property that we studied in the previous slide. So in this case, if C is positive, we now equate this expression to C or its negative. 
the reason why I assumed here that C is positive is because if this is equal to 0, then that's just the same as AX plus B is equal to 0. So remember that whenever you have an absolute value equation, what you want to do is to achieve something like this, wherein you do not have absolute value signs. Your goal is to remove your absolute value sign. And this is how you do it. So for example, let's consider this one. The absolute value of 6x plus 4 plus 8 is equal to 5. Our first step is to isolate the term involving the absolute value on one side of the equation. So I have the absolute value of 6x plus 4. I will remove all the other terms beside it. So this would be 5 minus 8. Absolute value of 6x plus 4 is equal to negative 3. Take note that the constant here is negative. Can it happen that the absolute value of a number is equal to a negative number? No. This one here is impossible. So therefore, this one has no solution. Next, we have this one. Similarly, just what we did in the previous slide, isolate the term involving the absolute value sign. I have 6 transpose this plus 4. I get that 3x minus 5 is equal to 10. And then 10 here is positive. So therefore, how do we remove the absolute value sign here? We turn that into two equations. The first one, remove the absolute value sign and equate the expression inside to 10. And for the other one, equate the expression inside the absolute value sign to the negative of the constant. These are just two linear equations and from our previous lesson, we know how to answer this. I will transpose minus five. So I have three X equals 15. Divide both sides by three. We get that X is equal to five. For this other equation here, similarly, we transpose negative 5. So we have negative 10 plus 5, which is equal to negative 5. Divide both sides again by 3. So therefore, X is equal to negative 5 thirds. These two are your solutions to this absolute value equation. Next. In this example, we just have one term involving the absolute value sign and it's already isolated and it is equal to zero. If the absolute value of an expression is equal to zero, then we have no other choice but to set that expression to be equal to zero because the only number whose absolute value is equal to zero is zero. Let's solve for x, I'll transpose 10, divide both sides by negative 5, we get that x is equal to negative 10 over negative 5 is 2. For this example over here, this is a bit different because it's no longer of this form. Absolute value of something equals a constant. 2x minus 11 here is not a constant. So how do we proceed with this kind of equations? Now, in order to answer this, we will first assume that our 2x minus 11 is positive. Because if this is positive, then that would mean now that I can break it down to two equations. It will now become 4 minus 3x, copy the expression inside, it's equal to 2x minus 11. And for the other one, 4 minus 3x is equal to the negative of the entire 2x minus 11. So don't forget to put a parenthesis. Or if you want, when you get the negative of a term, you can simply switch if it's minus. So it will be 11 minus 
2x. Let me now solve this equation. I have 2x plus 3x is equal to 4 plus 11. 4 plus 11 is 15. 2x plus 3x is 5x. We get that x is equal to 3. For this side here, I will put 3x on this side. 4 minus 11, which is negative 7. But we're not yet done here. We have to make sure that it satisfies our assumption here that 2x minus 11 is positive. So let's just try that out. For x equals 3, we have 2 times 3 minus 11. 6 minus 11 is negative 5, and that is not positive. So therefore, we do not include that. Let's try x equals negative 7, so 2 times negative 7 minus 11. Is that positive? No. This is negative 14 minus 11, that is negative 25. That is not greater than 0. So therefore, therefore, if 2x minus 11 is positive, the equation has no solution. But of course, 2x minus 11 can also be equal to 0. Let's see whether we can get an equation there. So if 2x minus 11 is equal to 0, let us see. I will set 2x minus 11 to 0. It will become like this. If that is the case, 4 minus 3x is equal to 0 transpose x, divide both sides by 3, because we have 3x, so x is equal to 3 fourths. But remember that our assumption here is that 2x minus 11 is equal to 0. Does 3 fourths satisfy the equation? 2 times 3 fourths minus 11 definitely is not equal to 0. So therefore, no solution also if 2x minus 11 is equal to 0. And of course, if 2x minus 11 is negative, we know that we know that it will also have no solution because from our theorem, the absolute value of a number cannot be a negative number. So in all of these cases here, these are the three possibilities. This is equal to a positive number, it's equal to zero, or it's equal to a negative number. In all three cases, we found no solution. So therefore, this one really has no solution. Let's look at one more example. First, we want to isolate the term containing the absolute value sign is equal to 3x minus I will assume that 3x minus 2 is positive. I can bring this to two parts. 4 minus 5x is equal to this one. That's my C. And for the other one, equate the expression inside the absolute value sign to the negative of this, which is 2 minus 3x. And let's solve for x. This is equal to 4 plus 2, which is 6. x is equal to 3 fourths. For the other one, we have 5x minus 3x. 4 minus 2, we have 2x is equal to 2. So x is equal to 1. And then don't forget to check. Does it satisfy 3x minus 2 greater than 0? We have 3 times 3 fourths. I'm substituting this one. Minus 2 is that positive. 
this is 9 over 4. Yes, that is positive because 9 over 4 is equal to 1 fourth. So we now know that this is already a solution. Next, let's check x is equal to 1. If x is equal to 1, we have 3 times 1 minus 2. Yes, that is really greater than 0. So therefore, this is also a solution. Now, in this case, I will assume that 3x minus 2 is greater than or equal to 0. So that I will only have to check once. So similarly, we will obtain again what we had earlier, what we obtained earlier. We will obtain again x equals 3 fourths and x is equal to 1. And we will just check if it will satisfy this condition. And of course, it will turn out that both of these equations will satisfy this. At least now you just have to check once. All right, you no longer have to do the previous step wherein you will equate this to zero and then check again.